Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the June 2019 International A Level Mechanics M1, um, the Edexcel paper. And this question here is about a broom which is being used to sweep a rough horizontal floor. The handle of the broom makes an angle, constant angle of 40 degrees with the horizontal as shown in figure one. The broom head is modeled as a particle of mass 0.5 kilograms and the handle of the broom is modeled as a light rod. The coefficient of friction between the broom head and the floor is one quarter. The broom head is pushed along the floor in a straight line at constant speed. Find the magnitude of the force that is being applied along the handle of the broom to the broom head. So there's a few important um, points here. We have a rough floor, so we're going to deal with friction. Um, and the other thing that's very important here is that it says it's going at constant speed. So the acceleration is zero. Those are very important in this question for us to understand how to deal with this question. So here I've got a copy of the diagram so I can draw stuff on it and um, have everything close to what I'm going to write. So here, what we have here is we have this force being applied in this direction. Now, I like to always, you don't have to do this, okay? but I like to always continue the line of force past the object if it's going towards it. So I'm going to think about this force. I'm going to call this force P, the pushing force. It's acting in this direction. And I know if this angle is 40, this angle will also be 40 because they're vertically opposite, two straight lines together. All right, so that's one force acting on it. The other force acting on it, of course, is the weight of the particle. Now, the weight of the particle acts vertically downwards. Okay, so that's the weight of the particle. That's, uh, that's acting uh, uh, vertically downwards. And the weight, if the mass is 0 0.5 kilograms, um, the weight is 0 0.5 g newtons. So that's the weight of the particle. And as this is a rough plane, we're going to have friction acting. And the friction always acts opposite to the direction of motion. And they've given an arrow showing how it's moving. So this is friction that's reached its maximum value. Okay, why is it reached its maximum value? Because the object is in motion. So the, the maximum value of friction has been achieved. That means that the value of friction F max will be given by mu times R. And we're told in the question that mu is equal to a quarter. Okay, so that's important. And of course, the other force acting is the reaction force when the objects are in contact with the surface. Objects are in contact, contact with the surface, so there's a reaction force R. So those are the forces acting on this particle. Now, as this is moving horizontally, parallel to the plane, I need to make sure that my forces are resolved in the directions which are parallel and perpendicular to the plane. The friction is already resolved. It's already in that horizontal direction. And the weight is perpendicular to the direction of motion. That's fine. It's P that needs to be resolved perpendicular and parallel to the plane. So we have to resolve P in the horizontal direction and also in the vertical direction. Okay. And that will give us our proper force diagram, which we then can use to calculate stuff on. All right, so now, how do I resolve P in this direction? Okay, when it goes into the angle, when you resolve P in the direction such that it goes into the angle, you always use cosine. So this is P times the cosine of 40, because you're going into the angle. Whenever you go into the angle, it's always going to be cosine. If you think about it like this, um, a bit smaller, if you think about it like this, if I resolve this force going into the angle, what I mean by going into the angle, I mean you have to go into the angle mark. The 40 degrees is marked there. You have to go inside the angle, into the angle to resolve in that direction. And when you're resolving in a direction which is um, perpendicular to the plane here, you have to move away from the angle given. When you move away from the angle, it'll always be cosine. Away from the angle is sine into the angle is cosine. So this will be P times sine 40 in this direction. P sine 40 degrees. So going into the angle is cosine, away from the angle is sine. And how do we understand that? Okay, you can understand that by 
making a little line here just to illustrate why that's the case that's a nice easy way to remember it but why is it that why is that the case well i'll just show you supposing i have here um i'll make this line here when i'm going into the angle when i'm going into the angle then this side here is like adjacent to the angle right this is the adjacent side so this will be p times cosine 40 and when i'm going when i'm doing this uh, resolving um, vertically in this case then I'm going away from the angle so I'm looking for this the, the component in this direction going down this, okay which is perpendicular to the plane which is vertical and this is opposite the angle so you're going to use sine sine is opposite over hypotenuse so this is P this is you can say the sine of 40 is is going to be um, you know the sine of 40 is this divided by P okay so mm. that's how you can work out um, that that will be p times sine 40 all right so that's how you can deal with resolving forces when you're going into the angle you use cosine away from the angle you use sine if you remember that that makes life a lot easier so now we know that the acceleration is equal to zero because it's going at constant velocity all right so we can say that the resultant force fr equals ma so we know fr is equal to zero so if we resolve First of all, um, in the vertical direction, perpendicular to the motion, vertically, you have R acting upwards, and you have two forces acting down. One is the weight, which is 0.5 g, and the other one is the, resu the, the resultant force, or the result force of P in the vertical direction, which is P sine 40. That's going to be acting downwards because this broom is being pushed in the downwards direction. So it's pressing it against the floor a bit. Okay, so that's one equation we've got to, all right, which we, you know, we can keep aside for us to use. And the other equation is if we resolve in the direction that it's being pushed, which is horizontally, we have one force acting in this direction, which is P cosine 40. And in the opposite direction is the friction. And we know that the resultant force is equal to zero. So we can say Fm the frictional force is equal to P cosine 40. They must balance each other out for it to be going at constant velocity. So Fm equals P cosine 40. And as we know, Fm equals mu r. So what I can say is that um, Fm is mu r. So I can say that P cosine 40 is equal to mu times r. So it's a quarter times r, which is 0 0.5 g plus p sine 40 so what i can do now i want to make p the subject it's the only unknown but i want to keep things exact until the last step just to make my calculations less you know or more accurate for a less problem as well so i'm going to keep things in terms of cosine and sine 40 until the end so first thing i'll do is i'll get rid of the fraction multiply both sides by by four so four times p cosine 40 is equal to you'll have 0 0.5 g plus p sine 40 let's bring the p's to one side so you have 4p times cosine 40 minus p times sine 40 equals 0 0.5 g and now we can take out p as common to find p in the end so you have p times 4 cosine 40 minus sine 40 equals 0 0.5 g so therefore we can say p is equal to 0 0.5 times g which is 9.8 over 4 cosine 40 minus sine 40 so we can say that p is equal to if we stick this in our calculator we have 0 0.5 times 9.8 divided by 4 cosine 40 minus sine of 40 and that gives us 2.02363 2.02 okay so we can leave our answer to 3sf if we want 2.02 newtons or if we want we can say p equals 2.0 newtons 
I prefer to keep things in 3SF always because that's always acceptable. But as we've used G as 9.8, which we're instructed to do in the, in the question, then that's to 2SF. So our final answer written to 2SF is, you know, perfectly fine. So that's, we can write both of these. I prefer to keep to 3SF because that's always acceptable whether we use G or not. Whereas this is only acceptable when we've used G. So just to be safe, I like to keep in the exam the answer as 3SF. So there's the answer to question number two from this paper, June 2019, um, Mechanics M1, International A-Level. And other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area over here. Other questions from um, this topic of um, forces and friction can be found in the playlist in this area over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. In the description um, of the video, you'll find also links to the index I have for my AS and A2 uh, papers and topics, as well as my IGCSE um, you know, topics and questions that you or your friends might find useful. So please uh, check them out. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.